back again today for the renovation series so today we're going to give this lawn a scalp and probably in this video we're going to aerate this lawn as well I'm going to go pick that up this afternoon so let's get all the thatch out from the top and i'll show you guys what mower i'm using and talk about what mowers you can use and why we also do the scalping and the aerating process let's go So today we're using this utility mower. So this is my big bob from the guys at Super Swift. Now you can get a lot of these. I mean, you can buy these things brand new nowadays. I know old Brenton from the Aussie Lawn has an old toe cutter, an old two stroke Victor, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Which they do the job. But the reason a utility mower is really, really good for scalping your lawn is because they go just that little bit lower and they've got enough grunt to scalp your lawn. And they've got a little cutout at the front here as well. Now, you could use your cylinder mower if you wanted to. You honestly could. Um, you just gotta realize that you're probably gonna have to get a center way to be ground if you're gonna be using it for that because you can dig into the dirt, the sand, etc. But yeah, we're gonna use this today. Or you could use a general push mower and put it on its lower setting or try and make it go a little bit lower as well. But when we're scalping, we want to get pretty close to getting to dirt. We're not gonna try to do that today, but you wanna get nice and low. Yo mate, what up? Welcome to another lawn tip vid. If you missed last week's video, make sure you check that out. We talked about scarifying, why we scarify, removing thatch, dethatching your lawn, and why a scarifier is important to warm season grasses like Kikuyu, Cooch, and Zoysia. Not your buffalo, but this scalping step you can do on pretty much any grass type to get our above ground thatch. Just gotta be aware with like something like Queensland Blue Cooch and your buffalo, you don't scalp too low. I wouldn't be going down to dirt at all. I'd just be taking off the, off the top layer and trying to suck out some of this brown stuff that we have in the top layer there. So our above ground thatch. Now, if you want to know more about it again, go to last week's video where I blab on about thatch for like dead set 10 minutes. <laughs> but today, that's what we're doing. Removing all the above ground thatch. Now, there's not a lot in here, but there is some throughout here. There's a bit of brown stuff here and there, as you can see, but it's not shocking. So. The main reason I'm taking this down is one for the thatch, but the main, main reason is so that we can reset our height of cuts. So when I scout back, my goal for this lawn is to be at about 10 mil this season. So this is sitting currently at about 15 to 18 mil. It's around there somewhere. I did squeeze it down a little bit over the last couple of weeks. We want to get it down around, I'd say 10 to 12 mil. So today we're going to scalp it down to about seven or eight mil. Um, and from there, that is going to reset our height of cut and we can start cutting again at about 10 to 12 mil and it's going to stay green because we're cutting down below the crown so this is something that people always ask when i want to lower my height of cut do i take it down increment by increment highly recommend you just scalp it cut into the crown so the crown is the part that is going to be below the leaf blade that's why when you scalp normally it starts to go brown because you're cutting all the leaf blade off and cutting into the crown which is down below so Cutting off the blade down to the crown, so that's gonna shoot some new shoots a little bit lower in our lawn here. Also makes it a little bit easier to then spread our top dress as well. When we've scalped it, because we can actually rub it in and level it in a little bit easier. It does take a little bit longer to repair, but it's gonna be fine. So not gonna do a heavy scalp today because we don't need to, because last year we did a ridiculous reno and went down to dirt. I could go to dirt if I wanted to, but I wanted to come back quicker this time around. And as I've said, I don't have a lot of thatch in here. So it's not going to be a problem at all. But I think that's about it. Let's get stuck into it. Let's scalp it. <laughs> Make it turn brown. <laughs> Okay, so we are done. So you can see we've scalped it. You can see the dirt now. 
which is good. Some areas are a little bit thicker, so you can't quite see that much dirt, but we've got it down, so we've pulled out all of that crusty dead stuff from in there. Yeah, there's none left in there. We've just got the dirt and the green blades. So, got the wife so engaged just here. And it's sitting at, we're looking at about eight, eight to 10 mil, which is fine. So we're gonna be looking, as I said, we're gonna try to cut it 10 to 12 mil. So that's gonna be pretty much bang on where we wanna be. Eight to 10, some parts when I first start cutting with the cylinder may slightly scout, but the majority of it's sitting at about eight mil, which man, is gonna be fine. And you find too, your cylinder mowers tend to float a little bit on top of that as well, because they're not sitting down at the soil level. So it won't be exactly um, 10 mil from the dirt level, if you know what I mean, because it's gonna be floating on top as well. So yeah, I think that is perfect. Now, if you wanna do a really, really heavy renovation, you can go down to dirt with KaiQ and your cooch as well, and your Zoysia, like I've said. Again, don't do the buffalo. Look at my video from last season, as I spoke about last week, to get an idea on how low you can actually go. Just be aware, the lower you go, and the more you get down to dirt, the longer it's just gonna to take to repair. So another reason I want it to not go so deep is just because we've got so much rain this season, the soil temps are just not getting up there like they have been in previous years because of the rain. So it's, it's a smart move to probably not go down to dirt because we're gonna get that constant rain washing out and I want it to grow through as quick as I can so that sand is held by the grass and the canopy as quickly as it can be as well. Next step for the renovation, which is probably one of the most important things next to the top dressing, is actually aerating your lawn. So if you don't do anything, if you at least aerate, you can have a pretty good season because the main reason we do this is because it's gonna get oxygen back down in our root system because we're gonna be pulling out some compacted ground, obviously relieve compaction, allow water to get down into your root zone a lot better as well. So that's gonna be a lot better for your drainage on top of that. So it's gonna make a world of difference for your whole season if you can get yourself an aerator and run it over your lawn. Now this thing here has got a hydrostatic drive. Um, this is a Billy Goat one. This is from one of my old schoolmates, John Walls. Shout out to John. Thank you so much for letting me borrow this, mate. Um, and he owns a business in town called Colour City Gardens as well. So check it out if you're in the region, because he does this as a side hustle. You can also use one of those Billy Goat goat aerators from, not Billy Goat, sorry, the Bluebird ones from Kennards, which I used last year. Shout out to Kennards, because they supplied that to me last year as well. And you can also use a hand core aerator as well, if you would like. There's many, many ways to do it. You don't have to hire a machine out. It's just a little bit easier on your back, <laughs> if you hire something out, to be honest. And you're probably gonna pull a better core. Um, but yeah, we're gonna run this today. The, the goal is to get around about 100 mil in depth. I mean, if we get anywhere from 75 to 100 mil, that's gonna be sweet. Nice deep core. Um, make sure if you've got irrigation, so like sprinkle heads, you mark them out where they are. That's why you're supposed to run irrigation lines 200 mil deep, because your air rate is generally go about 100 mil. Some people like to squeeze it down a bit further than that, but 100 mil is gonna be fine. But let's run it. Let's do it now. And I'll show you guys what it looks like afterwards. How good is that? How good of a job did that do? Seriously. Look at the size of those cores. Big chunky suckers. Mate, and they go down to my base of that knuckle there. Yep. Far out, man. That is absolutely perfect. This is going to set me up for a really, really good season this year, which I'm excited about. Now it's going to get some sand down in there to help it do its thing. And then we're set up for this year. So I'm gonna clean it up now with the old cut If I was you, I definitely recommend you clean these cores up if you're working with cylinder mowers. If you're working with rotary mowers, you can let it break down or rub it in and let it work as top dress or something to an extent. Um, but personally, I'd like to pick these suckers up just so they're off the lawn. And then you can bring in your other material, which is gonna be our sand, which is gonna be great for drainage, great for leveling, because it won't break down over time. And sand is very easily to level with as well. Plus, it doesn't normally have weed seeds in it. Anyway, let's pick this all up. Woo! Well, that is done. So I actually used, the mow wasn't picking up, but it was way too wet. Because I've had so much rain, as you can imagine. So I used this rake here, this is from Runnings by Cyclone. Just used the back of the rake to push it all down. 
Sort of similar to one of the tools we used to use on the course, but obviously it didn't have a rake head on the end of it. It just had like a flat edge at the back of it. I'm stuffed after doing that, man. It took about an hour just to push that down. It's ridiculous. <coughs> oh dear. Oh, maybe not that long, maybe half an hour. I'm exaggerating. Um, so that's basically all we're gonna do for today. Obviously the next step is gonna be our top dressing. And then after that, we're gonna put down some fertilizer as well. So I'm gonna put down some reinstate fertilizer. Um, on this next because it's a great renovation for it, great for when you're putting seed down and stuff as well. So that's the fertilizer I'll put down once we get our top dress down, which I'm hoping to do next week, but it looks like we've got rain into the middle of next week. Everyone knows, everyone like most people in Australia are getting rain at the moment, so everyone knows what I'm talking about. Um, so stay safe everyone if you're in one of those areas that have got flood risks. Um, but that's it for today. Glad to have got that done. Hope you guys learned something from that. If you want to see any more on the renovation process, I think I've got like four or five videos on the channel. Just look up lawn tips, lawn renovation, and you'll find them all, quite a few of them on YouTube with seeding, different types of grass, doing a whole renovation in one video. There's lots of different videos on there, so check that out. Um, but thanks guys so much, appreciate yours, and I'll see you guys in the next one.